and welcome to the second edition of Health Med Info, a program that brings to you all you need to know about your health and healthy living. I am Esther Michael. In our last maiden edition, we told you we will continue from where we stopped due to time factors. Today, we will continue our discussion with our guest, the medical laboratory scientists, Comrade Samuel. Obajemu, the chairman of the Kogi State Association of Medical Laboratory Scientists of Nigeria. Dr. Siri Agu, the CEO director of Agmetics Diagnostics Laboratory. And Comrade Amos Lawal, the CEO of Liberty Laboratory and chairman of the EDAS Forum. These experts started explaining who are the medical lab scientists where to find them and what qualifies them to be, as well as many gain attached to the noble profession. Today, they will continue to tell us more about their plans, what they have as an association and as individuals. Remember, this edition is sponsored by the AMLSN Kogis chapter. I am Esther Michael, your anchor. Please relax and watch the remaining part of the discussion immediately after the break. Stay with us. How they live in. It's time to thrive. Get the fact, take control, and stay alive. Health Med Info on Malakai TV Online, your go to guide for a healthier life. Expert advice, tips, and more in store. Tune in every Saturday, 5 p.m., with Esther and open the door to appear healthier you every day with health med info stay alive so, so what are the potential career paths and opportunities available to medical laboratory scientists oh so many so many uh being a medical laboratory scientist does not necessarily mean that you must be working on the bench in the area of diagnosis alone. There are potentials in research and development whereby you can go into research into diseases. There are opportunities in reagent production, uh, equipment production, there's medical devices. There are opportunities there. You can also be uh, a consultant on health services. Then look at the area of uh, lecturing or teaching in the universities. It's also a potential uh, career path. You can work in food industries, beverage industries. You can work in probably waterworks and so many other places. So it's not just an uh, issue of uh, being only in diagnosis and, uh, let's like say, analyzing body fluids, like we mentioned, blood or urine or stool sample. So other career paths are very much available. Take, for instance, the production of a vaccine involved. Many of our members are involved. Gomboro vaccine and other vaccine that is in use for our cattle and uh, cattle rearing folk. So many of our, our members are there in, in the area of producing and production of uh, vaccine. And even in the area of uh, cosmetic industry, we have our scientists that are quality control analysts in such area. Myself here, yeah, I have been an analyst uh, honey, on honey production. I've worked in a honey uh, processing factory where I analyze honey for fructose content and uh, for glucose content to see if the quality is okay. So, potentials are very much available. Thank you. Thank you Sorry, can I just quickly come in? Uh, my boss here just uh, mentioned uh, production. That is one of the vision of this, uh, my administration. Coming on board in less than one month, we're already looking for a place, an outfit in Kogi, in Lokoja here to be very precise, where we can uh, start production. You see, we, the economy of the state, uh, we are really not uh, boosting it enough. By the time MLS or Association of Medical Laboratory Sciences goes in Kogi State, goes into um, production of some basic uh, reagents. reagents. It will help and boost the economy because, of course, tax will come from there and then we will not need to go out. Even the state government will not need to go out to maybe Onichaaba or outside the country to get import all this. We can produce them. We are capable. 
we just need funding. And that is why we are also using this opportunity to uh, appeal to the state government to look inwards and see how they can come on board, uh, fund us, give us a, a, an outfit, an edifice where we can have this production. Like uh, my boss here, the CEO of uh, Agmedis, he will tell us even some stains that we need to be using, which is an advancement over the stains we have been using over the time. So very soon, in the next two to three months, you will be hearing us coming on board with production of uh, maybe hydrogen peroxide, methylated spirits, and um, stains, and um, lots more. We'll start producing them in large scale that can actually take the capacity of uh, the hospital in Koki State. Even the pharmaceutical companies here in Koki State will also patronize us, we believe that, and so many other areas. And to quickly add up to other career paths, we can also function, MLS can function in the areas of uh, genetic engineering, biotechnology, forensic medicine. We, can, we are involved in paternity disputes. If two people are struggling for a baby, you can actually go into uh, using the DNA and um, to discover who the father or the mother is at a particular time. So I think that uh, MLS is, has a very widespread of uh, activity and role. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, sir. To Dr. Siri, how do medical laboratory scientists stay current with new technologies and advancement in the field? Thank you very much. Training and retraining, that is the way to go. CPD is something any medical lab scientist who knows his own illness can never do without. Continuing professional development. In fact, some employers, in addition to all the resumes you would have submitted, will want to see your CPD certificates. That tells you that it's an integral part of development of any medical lab scientist. So is it that you register for further studies in the institutions to develop your skill, develop your intellect, or you can, for those that are not interested in going higher, you should show enough commitment to CPD. That is where you go to sharpen your intellect, because before you can say Jack Robinson that this method has been discovered, another one is even around the corner. So if you're just satisfied with what you know last year, my dear, you'll be left behind. For you to really stay on top of your game, you must continue to develop yourself continuously. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So I'll be back again about the quackery. So I want you to throw more light on it. What are the measures your association is taking to, to stop it? OK. Um, to start with, quackery has origin to the Dutch and um, it has to do with uh, doing the wrong thing um, when you don't uh, follow the procedures, when you don't follow standards, when you are not uh, appro uh, I mean, licensed to do a particular thing and you go into it, that is quackery. And um, no wonder you see when somebody drives in the streets without a license, he's arrested. So if the government can actually put in place some agents to arrest people who can actually drive, but they don't have the license, then it means that uh, this has to do with life, medicals. We should have measures in place. We should have policies in place. We should have uh, agencies who will uh, actually clamp down on uh, quackery uh, in the state, particularly here in Kogi State. For instance, uh, you know, you, we have heard of mushroom laboratories where they just, you go there, they just write anything out for you, malaria and typhoid, they load you with drugs, and they are not trained personnel. Like my boss said earlier that you are supposed to be trained for five years, do your internship one year, then you are given license to practice. This is the procedure. If you don't have a license from the regulatory body, we have a regulatory body that regulates the practice and ensure that every institution, both private and public, comply with the standards. And this standard is uh, um, ISO 15189. That's, uh, we should comply with the guidelines and the checklist must be complied with. So no one can just open a mushroom lab or you have a chemist and you just decide, oh, let me be doing tests. Because mm -hmm. patients come here and just feel that, let me run tests for them and get more money. 
So some people are money conscious, they don't value life. But here we value life. That is why we take an oath for the safety of life. But these other people, they are more of the money, the gains, and no oath for life. So uh, what we are going to do is to, because as association, at national level, at state level, and at chapter level, we, we are here like uh, to have surveillance. We we'll monitor, go around the states and ensure that we see all the laboratories that are not conforming to the standards, either private or public. We will also compile the list, the list of uh, laboratories that are uh, up to date or complying with standards. We will publish them and ensure that the public patronizes those people rather than quacks. Then we will also ensure we will work with the state government. That is the federal I mean, the Ministry of Health in the state here. Uh, to I know they have a team. We will collaborate with them and ensure that we move around. We will prosecute. There was even one I think in the central side. He was practicing. He was caught, and he was so uh, pompous. He was prosecuted by the state, and um, the state won against him. And today I think the laboratory is closed down. So we'll go and ensure when we identify you, we we'll check you if you are number one. Are you the are you the right personnel? Some people engage cheap labor; they just want SLT people who, like we said earlier, mm. are trained for animals just to come into the laboratory and work. We even have some government hospitals, as we speak in Kogi State right now, that are even engaging the services of uh, SLT to to do. The, we are going to go into those hospitals and we'll be making noise about them. We are taking zero tolerance to quackery because we are talking about life. It can be me today, it can be you tomorrow. We don't know who is who that will fall into these hands of these quacks. And then we are the messes of, the, of, of their, of their uh, um, unprofessionalism. So we are using this medium to also talk to the public that we are here to clamp on, on quacks and on quackery as, it, as the case may be, either in the public or the private sector. We are out to do that. Very soon you'll see us start publishing names, and but we'll go around and ensure, please ensure that your personnel that you engage are trained personnel. It could be uh, a medical laboratory scientist, they could be also medical laboratory technicians. These technicians are also trained in the College of Health Tech in um, IDA for three years, and they can also do some little, little according to their scope, but not science lab tech and not any other. Um, scientists, aside medical laboratory scientists. Thank you. Thank you very much. We, we are still on Health Med Info. We will go on a short break. Join us after the break. It's not new again to say health is wealth. We all know that's true. But do you know when to check your health status? Do you care to learn about living healthy and bright? Would you turn to when you're feeling not quite right? Join Health Med Info for answers and insights to keep you in prime time on YouTube channel, Malachi TV, Facebook pages, MLC TV, MLC TV 2, Instagram, MLC TV 2021, X under Malachi TV, and TikTok, Malachi underscore TV. Don't miss this valuable info on your way to help you live your best life every single day. Welcome back, still on Health Med Info. My, gu uh, my guests are still Dr. Siri Agu, Comrade Amos Lawal, and Comrade Obajem Samuel. To Comrade Amos, how important is teamwork and collaboration for medical laboratory scientists in healthcare setting? Oh, very, very important. Collaboration between medical societies and other professional uh, healthcare uh, partners is very important if the patient is to achieve the overall aim of coming to the hospital. We collaborate along so many parts, particularly in the area of uh, surveillance studies. We collaborate with other health partners to determine disease uh, outbreak and uh, to the extent to which it has affected uh, some demographic uh, areas and such information is utilized for planning as regards um, to mitigate or to foster the spread of diseases. We collaborate along um, 
you know, there are certain days set aside by WHO to kind of uh, create awareness on certain diseases like tuberculosis, like uh, syphilis, like um, HIV, diabetes. So on days like maybe the TB day, we collaborate with other healthcare professionals to enlighten people on TB, create awareness on TB and the care you can take in, you, you can take to prevent, uh, prevent them. We do the diagnosis quite okay, but there are still other health professionals that are also uh, part of the teamwork that can effectively uh, curtail the spread of uh, TB. So we collaborate along that line. In the area of diabetes, World Diabetes Day, we do come out to enlighten people too on the diagnosis of it as well as uh, the treatment options available. Likewise, in the area of hepatitis D, HIV, so these are areas we collaborate with other uh, healthcare team to ensure that the public is not allowed to maybe be bogged down with so many disease uh, outbreak. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next question. Uh, what are the, some of the common challenges or circles faced by the medical laboratory scientists in their work, especially you, the CEO, sir, Dr. Siriago? Thank you very much. The challenges are really many, but I want to speak uh, on finances. Just like my humble comrade has said, that we need things like molecular diagnostic equipment in the whole of Cookie State. It requires a whole lot of money to get that one done. And until we get to that level, who will still be traveling out. That one is even requiring a humongous amount. Let me talk about even the smaller ones. I visited one other facility where students were being admitted. And then I saw the method they are using for genotyping. I was asking my colleague there, how are you guys coping with this number? He said, what can we do? We're using about three or four. He said, but there is a method you can use that will give you results within minutes. And that result is 99.9% .9 accurate. Can I introduce it to you? And say, my, my, my boss, I have money, money, money. I said, fine, that is the problem. Because if such uh, method is introduced, life becomes easier. The results are generated within minutes and the accuracy is top notch. Like something like genotype. You cannot do genotype using the normal hemoglobin separation method through electrophoresis. You can't do it for a baby that is less than six months. Mm. But the method I am talking about, a day old baby mm. can be diagnosed mm. today whether the baby is a sickle or not. Mm. You don't have to wait until six months and above, mm. but it requires money. Mm. Sir, so sorry, to answer your sorry, question sir. again, how much? How much are we talking about and how can we involve the government? Maybe it oh, can that, help. That, that is exactly what it. he has said now, that we are going to collaborate with the government. And something that I am saying now, I know it's not ending here. People will hear us yes. that there is a method that can be used to diagnose somebody that is SS in a day-old baby. Even the one that is still in the womb, we have means and ways of diagnosing that do you have that kind of money? We can take sample from the womb and get to know whether this baby that is still on the way coming will turn out to be a sickle. There are methods that we use to do it. Today, science and technology has gotten to that level. But do we have the kind of money we need to get them done here? We have the, the technical manpower. We have resource persons that can do that. But we are only limited by finances. Then I want to talk about, just to add a little flesh to what my comrade said concerning quackery and quacks. What fuels quackery in most societies is when you do not have enough hands to do the work. Nature abhors vacuum. When you don't have the required manpower, those that have the technical skill, those that have been well trained, 
those that are not adequately trained will take over. In the whole of Koki State, I make bold to say that we do not have any institution, not until just last three years, when PAU, that is Prince of Waka, uh, okay. University, started the training on medical lab sciences. They are the first one. Before now, what we have was College of Health, Ada, and um, which other one offer? Offer is not in Kogi State. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So it was only that, and maybe one other private institution. And they are training the low CADA staff in the medical lab science. Their training does not get them to the level where they can have their own private facilities. And what do you have? Because we do not have institutions training medical lab scientists, what you have all over the place are just the medical lab assistant and medical lab technicians. In some hospitals, the highest person you find in their lab is the medical lab technician. And he will assume the position that he is not trained to assume. And he will want to do what he is not even trained to do. So that is the problem. But I want to thank God most sincerely for what is happening now in Kogi State. Prince Abuba Kaudu University has started training on medical lab scientists. And the Federal University, by the way and manner the VC promised us, and we are taking his words for rich. By September, the training of medical lab scientists will commence at the Federal University of yeah. It is a plus. Yeah. And by the time we have enough hands, yeah. enough people being trained within, they, they will be willing to go to Basa yeah. to work. They will be yes. willing to go to every nook and cranny of this state. Yes. In, um, was it in, a, that should be in March. I was one of the techn uh, technical team that visited Costec mm. for resource verification. NUC came and we were there. Hopefully by the next academic session, medical lab scientists will be trained in that place. Mm. And in the same vein, Salem is packaging a program on medical lab sciences. So by the time up to four institutions, four universities, in this state are training medical lab scientists. Honestly, uh, there's this adage in my area that it is pointless marrying an ugly woman because the same dowry you paid for the beautiful one is the one you are paying for the ugly one. Yeah. So why marrying the ugly one? So when you have those that are really qualified in the field, you won't go to quacks. So that is one veritable means of fighting quackery and quacks. You give them alternative, quality and vi uh, viable alternative. And the person will not go to those that are not well trained. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And finally, Comrade Amos, sir, how does a medical laboratory scientist ensure accuracy and precision in laboratory text results? Thank you very much. To, uh, to ensure accuracy and precision in laboratory yes. test results, there are many methods provided. First and foremost, my comrade has mentioned ISO. 15189. This is the standard standard that is expected for us in the lab to uphold. Now, to ensure that our results are reliable, to ensure that the results are accurate, to ensure that they are reproducible and they, they are of diagnostic value to the clinician, we have tried to see how we can follow these measures that have been put in place by the standard organization. The standard organization have put in place certain provisions that we describe as the laboratory quality management system. system. That if you are compliant with them, you will discover that you are able to reduce to the barest minimum. Will I call it mistakes or the 
kind of uh, negative things that may stop your result from being reliable. Now, this cut across the organization, organization structure of the laboratory or of the uh, setting where you are working. It cuts across the kind of equipment you are using, the documents, how do you purchase your reagents. It cuts across our current management. It cuts across the process control. It cuts across your customer uh, service. Do you relate, how do you relate with your customer? Are you able to get feedback from your customers? And so on and so forth. And then in order to ensure accuracy, you put measures in place according to three categories. One, we have what we call pre-analytical measures. We have analytical measures and we have post-analytical measures. In the pre-analytical measures, we are, used, we are looking at how do you ensure that the right sample is taken from the right person at the right time, and you also put it in the right receptacle, that's container, we're supposed to be. And then when you eventually bring it, how do you ensure that you follow the procedure to transport the sample? For instance, he mentioned something about transporting a sample for Lassa fever from Lokoja to Irua. There are transport uh, procedures, transport medium that you have to use. Otherwise, you may not even get anything from the sample. So you ensure that all these are in place. And then when you eventually get it to the lab, how do you ensure that you, put, you write the name of the patient correctly, the age of the patient, the gender of the patient, the address of the patient, and all other uh, information? they are well captured and then when you now proceed into the analytical phase are you using the right equipment the right reagent are your reagents optimal then what measures do you put in place to ensure that your equipments and your reagents are working well we have what we call external quality assessment we have internal quality control now the medical office science council Nigeria, the regulatory body of this profession what they do is that you are supposed to register with them register your lab with them they give you a sample. You analyze the sample, you send the result back to them. They now look at the results you have generated and <coughs> compare it with the standard result they have generated to see if your, if your lab is compliant, if you are doing well, if your organization, the quality, the result of the uh, emanating from your place is also in line with what is expected. Then you also do internal quality control checks whereby you produce graphs, we call it LJ charts, and compare your results to see if the, st the standard deviation is being complied with. So all these are measures you put in place. And then post-analytical, how do you ensure that the right result goes to the right patient? All these are measures you put in place to ensure that you reduce to the barest minimum any potential mistake or what have you, error that might creep in into your results. Thank you. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, is there any other thing you want to add to it? Well, um, uh, summarily, I uh, just want to advise the public and our viewers that uh, please don't do self-medication. Please. Ensure that laboratory test is conducted on you before you do that. And ensure that it is a trained a certified licensed medical laboratory scientist that is handling your samples so that you would be uh, have reliability on the results that is coming out. Aside this we want to quickly make an appeal to the state government that Association of Medical Laboratory Scientists of Nigeria Kogi State Branch has come on board. We are ready to work with the state government, we are ready to collaborate with them we need the state government to also help us to ensure that the manpower is increased in the state. In all our hospitals, in uh, HMB, in KSSH, in POWST, and every uh, institution that has to do with the state government. So please, uh, we need more manpower. Number two, we need uh, sophisticated uh, equipment, like molecular equipment, PCR, and so on, in all our hospitals. Number three, we also want you, the state government to help us, collaborate with us, and we collaborate with you to ensure that there is clamp down on quackery in the state, to ensure that the health of the state uh, remains improved. And number four, we are also looking at the state government to help us improve the uh, uh, payment package, the salary package of our um, members cut across the state, 
because this is one of the reasons why people don't want to even stay in the state. They run out of the state to where there are better packages. So we want the state to improve on conhes. Up to now, they have not been collecting 100% conhes. So we want to uh, appeal to the state government to see how they will implement 100% conhes. And lastly, we are ready to go into production that will boost the economy of the state. This place will be an economic hub by the time we start this production. And uh, people will even, rather than going out to buy all these things, they will start coming here. And the money that the state is spending outside, we will spend it within. And we can use it for some other things. We can channel it to some other things. So they should help us. We need an edifice or a site where we can have a piece of land and uh, have a production center and our secretariat. So we call upon the state government and uh, particularly His Excellency uh, Alaji Usman Ododo to help us in this vein. And for sure, you will get the best of us. Thank you so much and God bless. And this is where we wrap it up today on this very maiden edition. Thank you, sir, Dr. Siri. Thanks for coming. Thank you, sir, Comrade Amos Lawal. It's my pleasure. Thank you, sir, Comrade Obajemu Samuel. Thank you. We hope to see you next time. We appreciate you for coming. Thank you. And I'm glad you are still with us. I'm sure you are better informed about what AMLSN has in stock for you. I pray our government will seize this opportunity to engage them in this field of healthy living, to build a production industry, to further improve the state's economy, and create more jobs for our teaming youth. If this idea becomes a reality, the state government and the governor Ahmed Ododo will become a world celebrity because Kogi through her reference hospital in Okene, among other standard hospitals across Nigeria, Nigeria will patronize this production factory for the good of the people. Please, let me add this. Let the government also attract investors and encourage many well-to-do individuals to come into Kogi State in any part of the three senatorial districts, if possible, one in each those three zones, to build pharmaceutical factories, not to only generate income, but also create more jobs as well. That's why states like Lagos and Ogun have continued to top the chart when it comes to generating income internally. Please join us next week for another edition on this same station, Malakai TV. And also stay healthy because health is wealth. For more information, sponsorship, or adverse placement, please call any of these numbers displayed on the screen. Kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel, Malakai TV. Like and follow our various social media handles as we avoid those things that could pose a risk to our health. I am Esther Michael. See you next week.